Hello everyone, welcome back to Force Galaxy. Hope you all are doing good. So in today's video is on the Salesforce REST API. We will discuss what is REST API and what are its different methods to make call out. So before starting with the REST API, let's discuss what is API and what we can do with using API. So in simple words, API is an application programmable interface that allows two applications to talk to each other. So using an API, we can retrieve, transfer our data from one application to another and make them to talk to each other. So now let's understand with a simple scenario. Imagine you are sitting on a restaurant and you want to order something from a menu and the kitchen from which your food will be prepared is a system or another system where you want to transfer that is what menu or what you want to eat. Now here what is missing a link which can connect your order or which can take your order to the kitchen and bring back to your table. So this link which connects you and a kitchen to make your order prepare is a API. So now here you made a request that is order which you want to eat. Now the waiter will be act as a messenger or an API which will going to take your request to the system that is to the kitchen and bring back your food that is the response of your request. So this is how a API or a HTTP callout which we made work in a Salesforce. Now let's understand more. Similarly the Salesforce APIs work. So Salesforce APIs are a way for other application to access data within your Salesforce org in a simple and secure manner. So Salesforce APIs are like a door to flow data in and out of your Salesforce org. So another example to understand this and you guys must have used this in your Salesforce project that is data loader. You access or retrieve data from Salesforce org using data loader and this is all send and receive is possible through one such door only that is API. And Salesforce offers multiple kinds of API and they are Salesforce REST API, SOAP API, Streaming API, Tooling API, Chatter API and many more and uh, Metadata API also. So these are the different APIs using which we can perform different data flow from our Salesforce org. And all of these API have their specific uses for which they are made. And today we will discuss the REST API. So now let's start with the REST APIs. So the REST stands for Representational State Transfer. So allows for interaction with RESTful web services. So the primary difference here is that the requests which are sent as an HTTP request and this HTTP request has different methods using which we perform our different actions. So now here when a client request is made via RESTful API, it transfer a representation of state of the resource to the requester or at the end point. Now this information is delivered in one of the several format via HTTP. So there here are the different format using which we send our request that is either using JSON, HTML, Excel, T, Python or PHP. But basically we use JSON as this is easy to understand and write. So now as the REST callout are based on HTTP and each request has its own HTTP method as per our condition or requirement. So specifying its desired type of action and an endpoint we able to made our request completely and able to get re response as per our requirement. So here are the uh, different methods which have their different specific uses. Now let's go through them. First is get. It helps in retrieving resource identifying by the URL. Next is put, it allows to create or replace the resource that is sent to the request body. Now next is delete, this is simple, this is to delete a record. Now post, it create a resource or post data to the server that is this is used to create a data in our endpoint. Now the URI, this is it specify the endpoint address where the service is located. Now JSON parser, it is built in class that convert a string to an object. Now the response can be received as an XML format or as a JSON format. So basically we use JSON format only. So here is a demo how a JSON look like. So here left hand side are the field API's name and the right hand side are the values which we want to put. 
the theory so this is the theory about the rest api how we can use and what are the different methods it has now let's move to one of the platform from which from where we can test these methods of our rest api so now let's go with the workbench and you can also test all these in the postman also so now let's check all the http method or the rest api with the workbench so here i'm logging with my dev org that is login with salesforce and now here as you can see there are other different options from where you can retrieve the information of your org like information its metadata objects queries data insert update migration that is deployment and in under utilities you have a option of rest explorer here we will going to check our all rest http methods so now let's click on rest explorer so here as you can see so these are the different http methods and using this we will make our rest api call out so here let's discuss one by one all the methods and how we can use them so here the first method is our get so get is used to read or retrieve the records so making the get request we will able to retrieve our records and so next is post so here when i click on post you also see a option of request body so here we will pass our data in json format and post is to create a records now the next is put so here put is typically to update existing records or create the record so in simple words we can say it is a action of absurd so here we can update and also if the not record is not existed we can able to create the records and in the patch this is to update the existing records only and now next is delete this is simple to delete the record and now here head is used to retrieve object record metadata so now let's first start with the get method and in this method we need to pass a url which will hit our salesforce org and get required data which we pass in this url so we can also get object metadata we can get particular record by passing object id record object record id and we can also provide our custom soql in this url so it will give or return us a required record so now let's check with the custom query so what i will do i will pass a custom query in this url so here it is start with services data then the say of or version and then here question mark where q is a parameter equals to here we will enter our query for which we want to return our record so here i have perform a query on account object with limit 10 so when i execute this it will return me a total size done that is the status and the record list so here are the total 10 records which are returned and in the show row resource here you can see the date json which is returned so here this is the json pattern which is written by making this get method call out or in other words we can say this is a response which we have received after making a get request so this response is used and for in from which we access our information or the required information and perform our further functionality so now our next method is post so in post here a block is open for a request body and the post is used to create a record so uh, using post or this function i will going to create a record in my salesforce and a request body will be passed which in a json format so now in the url we need to add object name for which we want to create a record so here i want to create for account and i will pass a json body here in which it will contain a field name that is its api name and the value which i want to put in the fields so here i have taken name and rating and using these value i have executed this and a record is created and in return it shows me or it give me a id of the record which is created in my salesforce and the success which is true so here let me show you a json response which is received here three parameter that is id success and error so here errors is a array so currently my record is created successfully with no error so 
so now let's check in the salesforce whether my record is created or not so let me paste the id which is received in the response so here as you can see the same record with the same value that is rating and the name is created in the salesforce successfully so now let's check another method that is put now let's try to update this record with put request as we have discussed that the put and patch both are used for update and the main difference between both is put is basically an absurd action and and using put we update the entire resource and using patch we only update the partial data that is if i want to update the first name then using patch we can easily update this but if i try same with using the put then it will going to update first name with the new value and the remaining one it will update with the null values so now here i have passed the account record id and the updated value for the rating now let's try to execute this so here as you can see it has shown me method not allowed that is my record is not updated and it has fired me a message that is the put method is not allowed only the allowed methods are this so here is a reason and a solution is also there how we can use put for making a update call so this this i will explain on a code that is how we can override method and use put for making update call that is how a method overriding is done so uh, this we will see in a real time scenario when i uh, explain you the code that is how we use put method and update our records so now let's try the same with the patch method so here in the url record id is already passed and the json is updated json is also passed now let's execute this so here as you can see my record is updated successfully with no errors so here is the response now let's review the changes in the salesforce so that is my rating value is changed or not so now let's check this so let me refresh this and here as you can see now the rating value is changed to warm so my update call is successfully update the record now let's try the delete method so this is simple now no need of request body we just need to pass id or a uh, customized soql according to our need so let me delete the same record which we have created here so now let's execute this now let me refresh this now here as you can see now the record is deleted successfully so these are the basic methods which are used for the integration and using this method we get or retrieve our records update and insert our records in salesforce so this is just an overview to make you familiar with the different methods and how they are used to make to complete our request and now in the next video we will take a scenario and write a code and discuss more then you will be able to understand this more how we can use the integration and http methods to make callouts hope you guys enjoy the video and get an idea about how we can use the rest apis and how they work in salesforce now the next video will be on a program how we can write a program you and use these different methods to access our data so stay tuned till then take care goodbye